Hi. Gonna take that off? Over here. Okay, guys, we gotta figure out how to get that thing off every time we get ready to go live. There we go. Guys, guess what? Sneak preview. Brandy, right, stand away. You're in front of the light right quick here. Uh, sneak preview, if you can ease around. Sneak preview to our first teen pregnancy center. Boom! And the women are responding like you would not believe. We're so excited. So uh, a, a powerful weekend because like tomorrow, we're going to be with Chris Scott uh, working and then being be, be the change you want to see uh, with the people living up under the bridge with the homeless. So all day yesterday, we literally were juggling two outreaches, uh, going through all of the uh, getting uh, coats and sweaters and hats and uh, blankets and shoes uh, for those tomorrow. So hop on tomorrow. We're going to be coming live from Atlanta, Georgia with Minister Chris Scott. She's been leading this effort and doing it. It's her own initiative. And I came to join her so we can model collaboration and the body working together so that this generation can see a picture of what the kingdom looks like and the truth. So you're here. I'm going to be in and out and moving around because in order to get it on multiple channels, we had to come from my laptop. So we got Pam over here. Here and we got grandma over here, Pam and Tony, and Versace, of course. You see Versace here. Mama's counting up our um doing our pampers for the babies. And uh I'm gonna turn this way so you can see our we got our baby changer. We got our first baby changer and gotta kind of turn this around so you guys can see everything because I want everybody to be able to see. We've got our um baby rocker and putting this together i was like they didn't have baby rockers in my days i was the baby rocker i should have called mimi to say how do you do that and of course the side to think this whole room is for him this always thinks about him but look at this guys look at this right here i want to make sure they get this brandy our rocking horse i guess i gotta turn a little bit more look at our little rocking horse i love it i know that they're look at this just a whole nursery atmosphere and let's see what we got going on over here uh, we got the rocker the baby changer so this room here will be one of the first rooms and before this was the ethiopian suite representing east africa so pam and and uh, tony and grandma and i want i want our grannies to understand first of all let me tell you about this uh superhero grandma here she they, they were up to what time last night pam what were you up to? What time last night? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, one. So yesterday, guys, you all remember I was saying that I needed um, a painter. And so to show you the power of going live and the power of those of you that are family out there that believe that there's a kingdom approach to doing this God's way versus the way we've been doing things. And uh, cause you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting to get a different result, which is what we've been doing for 49 years concerning Roe versus Wade. And, uh, and when I connect back to mama's story and tell you about mama, for 49 years, we've been going back and forth about Roe versus Wade, that if we overturn Roe versus Wade is gonna stop abortion. So, here I go. I know it's going to be radical and I'm going to hear a lot of things from people. We've been focusing on the wrong thing. Instead of focusing on stopping abortion, let's focus on celebrating life, like getting into the life of the young girl and doing like we're doing. Tony had a lot of things she could be doing today. Grandma had a lot of things she could be doing today. Pam got tons of things. I got tons of things. But if we're going to be ready for this end time harvest that God told us is coming, they're coming with all kinds of issues. And the answer is not protesting in front of abortion centers and telling people they're going to hell. And, and so if we would have taken all of that uh, power, energy, focus, initiative, and focus that on getting into the life of young girls before they get pregnant or even after they get pregnant to show them another way and show them love and show them compassion and be the tightest two mothers like grandmama is doing here. And for all the other grannies that are watching, because let me just say this to you, for the last 49 years, you wait till I start giving you statistics of how we have been hoodwinked. We have been bamboozled into thinking that the solution to all of this is from a political approach or political solution. So every single year, I mean, every four years, and especially this year, the body Christ gets you know, divided down the middle, pro-life, pro-choice, 
uh, all the other issues that we had crazy about this year, last year was just crazy. And I was like, no, this is crazy. We gotta be the change we wanna see. And so sometimes we keep waiting for somebody else to do it. And then I just got convicted, you do it. And it was like, the Lord's like, what do you have in your hand? Well, what we have in the hand is our soul training center, but it had work that needed to be done is to, to get it ready, to get it outfitted, to get it uh, up to code for a teen pregnancy center. And then also the statistics with uh, young girls or girls in trapped in human trafficking and can't get out and need a safe house. And so model it and then show women and men and pastors, especially you pastors that are watching, like some of you pastors that are watching, and I've been talking to your wives, they're like, I've always wanted to do this. And so the facility is not there. You don't have to do the facility, we have it. We don't care whose name is on this. Come, uh, work your program through here. Come, let's link arms together so that we can rescue a generation and not wait on a politician to do it. So here's the facts. On the Republican side and on the Democratic side, the 12, uh, Republican Supreme Court, ju the judges that we have, and the four Democrats on both sides and every year and throughout the years for the last 49 years, Roe versus Wade has not been overturned. And interesting enough, during the times where there's been a sitting Republican president uh, through at least three administrations, hmm, how could this be? Maybe God's trying to tell us something. The abortion rate went up, they had more. And then sometimes it, it goes back and forth. Sometimes when there's a Democrat sitting president, it go down. And then there were times when there was a Republican sitting president, it went up. And then times with a Democrat, just like cheer room, cheer room, cheer room. So like God is saying, hello, I'm trying to show you. Neither one of them have the answer. God is saying, when I said through you, the families of the earth shall be empowered to prosper. I was not speaking to a Democrat or Republican. I was speaking to my people called by my name. And so he says, through you, the families of the earth shall be blessed. He gave us dominion in the earth. And we keep trying to abdicate our role and get politicians to do what God called the church to do. So they don't have the responsibility. They don't have the anointing. They don't have the assignment. They don't have the answers because God didn't give that to them. So what are we doing? We pushing up our sleeves today. We literally are going through the garage and putting a system together so that, uh, you know, we have a base uh, hitting the streets in Atlanta, in LA, in Chicago, and we try to get a team in New York and Baltimore and just invade, show and invade social media. Come in, if you're doing things out there uh, uh, in the inner city with the homeless and Skid Row or whatever kind of outreach you're doing, come on and let's link together and let's put it out here and let this generation see that this is a picture of what the kingdom looks like and not looking to politicians to model the example of the kingdom, but looking to us, the ecclesia, God's governing body. So grandma here, going back to grandma, my grandma is showing, she was working till like, what do you say, about one o'clock? To after one. They, yesterday when we went live and we said they needed a painter, Tony calls me and she goes, my cousin can paint. And niece, 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 my niece, my niece can paint. And I'm like, your niece, I'm thinking about some little young millennium, like, hmm. And like, this is one of the main rooms that need to be painted, like, but I'm welcoming help. And I'm picturing this little young 21, 22 year old niece, not to say that a 21, 22 year old cannot paint. So if you're out there, you're 21, 22, this is not, uh, not throwing shade to you, okay? Because Brandy can paint up something, trust me, okay? So they drive from Alabama. They pack up the car and she goes like, do you need a ladder? Pam, I wish we brought those pictures to show that her stilts. Can we bring one of this, uh, this? Can we bring one up here to show them what it looks like? One, one, of, the one of the actual, yeah. So I'm in the kitchen because, like, when we get here, you know, I'm gonna be in the kitchen. I'm always cooking. For, if you come in to help me, I am going to feed you. Know that when you come to Atlanta to come and help for the team pregnancy center, we're gonna feed you. So I'm in the kitchen preparing, and all of a sudden, I see, you know, she's saying, "Can I, um, can I stand up on your counter?" I mean, can I sit on your counter? I'm like, baby, you come in to help me. You can sit on the counter. You can stand on the stove. You can sit on the refrigerator. You can do whatever you... But I'm thinking, sit on the counter. Like, what is she trying to do? So she pulls out these stilts that she's standing up on. And I'm like, what are you doing with that? She's like, this is what I paint on. So I don't have to go up and down the ladder. I'm like, you better go home with your bad self. I call these no matter what women. And we got some no matter what men out there because we're an equal opportunity employer. But she made it happen. And so today you're looking at mama was her, like if you were in the kitchen and you would have a sous chef, mama was her assistant. And mama, what do you do when you're assisting her? I want them to see. For all the grannies that think that, you know, I can't really do anything and... Hold the paint. Uh, you hold the paint. Light. 
do the lighting and whatever step and fetch it. <laughs> whatever she did, right? <laughs> Mom, do you mind telling them some of the grannies is watching how old you are? Uh, no, no, no. I'm 71. 71 years old. And what made you come to help Mama? Well, we're kind of attached to him. I've always been her, mm -hmm. her helper. Wow. And, uh, and to hear about what we're doing. What you're doing. Wow. What we're doing collectively. Also, to yeah. I want you to see this while Pam is coming back. I don't know if I can zoom the camera in here. And let me step to the side. If you see those three women there, uh, sisters empowering the world women working together. And again, when I say these things, we're not leaving the men out, but I'm trying to show the power of when women come together. Where is that little plaque that I saw, Pam? I said I was gonna show them. The one that says the power when women work together. Did we leave it on that side? Yes. Can you hand that to me right quick? Do you see it there, Brandy? And Pam is going to come and show you. Oh. <laughs> and she's showing you what happens when women, drum roll Pam before you come. I saw this, Brandy actually found it and she showed it to me in the store. I was like, wow, Brandy. And it's probably gonna come across backwards on social media, but this is what, I mean, on, on the camera, but this is what it says. When women support each other, incredible things happen. Empowered women, empower women. And we know we can do that as well as, we could say, when we support the body of Christ and we support one another, incredible things happen because empowered believers empower others you know we're going to put this up here because we want even the mothers that are uh waiting for their unborn babies to be born that they would know that a group of women and a group of men came together to make life better for them so having said that look at what happens when women come together pam and show them this this blew me away drum roll guys this is what she was standing up on can you see this look at this so I guess they do this for guys that do drop leaf ceilings or whatever. So she's standing up on these huge, tall stilts. things. Stilts. Stilts. stilts, stilts, stilts. And we got some pictures. We're gonna shoot the pictures up on my Facebook page and on, and on uh, Instagram and ever. So you can see the video and you can see her in motion and you wait till you see the room that's finished. So this is what happens when we work together. So I'm gonna take, um, let you see Pam and Tony are getting ready to, uh, decorate the walls with little things like Sesame Street. And I love this one here, guys. Let me kind of tilt over so you can see what's going on here with them. They're on the bed there. This one here says, we're going to put this in the bathroom for the mothers and let everyone know. And all of you uh, women that are coming down to help, you can come and stay over. Women are saying things like, will I be able to stay there with the girls? Yes, you can. So here, because we got 34 beds, we have enough room for everyone. But look at this. Wash your hands and say your prayers because Jesus and germs are everywhere. So for all you people this word about, are you gonna be protected? So we're gonna put that in the bathroom. I'm gonna show you a picture of what the bathroom looks like. This has all been put together guys in a week. We landed on Monday morning. So these are some of the books we have that people have been donating uh, for our books already. You saw some of the children's clothes we um, put up on yesterday that were donated. And of course, in the children's library up here, we're gonna have a little library for the moms up here. And you know, we will have, I'm glad God made me a girl and I'm glad God made me a boy. So you're seeing it for the first time. And oh, I can't wait to see these, the little chairs and uh, sitting in front of the television. I'm gonna show you the beds on the other side. These, this team has been working as you can see. And we got a whole nother crew that's coming today. That's gonna be helping us with, uh, we have had to, I hope it's okay to sit here and I'm gonna kind of do this here. We've had, um, I hope this chair holds all of this, okay? <laughs> so uh, we got a crew today, we're doing the garage so that we can, cause before that's always been where we stored everything for our mission trip. This is not like some glamor TV things, like sister, we are working, it's hot and we're moving. Uh, to organize where the donations come, we can you know have shelves for the diapers, shelves for uh, so th those of you that want to di donate diapers and baby powder and baby oil, and uh, we still need baby beds and we still need uh, cribs and we still need a lot of things and most importantly we still need you. We literally would love for you to come, just like Tony came down 
put her family and we got some other people minister chris scott got another lady saying i'm going to come and help you with the garage we need your help and we can really make a difference and the most important thing is i just wanted to share that there is a kingdom pattern to change the culture you have to get in bread in the culture in the lifestyle and get in the trenches push up our sleeves and be willing to be inconvenienced because uh, I can't wait till we get a rocking chair. Somebody that's watching, guys, I saw a rocking chair. I took a picture at Home Depot. I'm going to put that up on some because there's one lady that was saying, oh, I'd like to be one of the ones sitting in a rocking chair by the fireplace. I saw one at Home Depot for $99. If you want to provide that rocking chair, I'll put that up on Facebook as well. And that's what people have been doing. I'll donate this. I want to donate that. And uh, when we have Soul Sisters in Power in the World in March, we sure would love to have you come here with the girls it's going to be a powerful place, a birthing center, a place where their lives can be transformed because the answer is not, we've been focusing on trying to change the laws. You can't legislate the heart of people because what happened, you wait till I break this thing down and show you the, the statistics. Did you know? You ready? I'm always dropping information. And this one, I have to say, thank God for my dear friend, Dr. Michelle uh, McKinney Hammond. And she said, doc, look at this. She sent me some stats and it, we were sitting talking about it this morning. Did you know that before Roe versus Wade that abortion was legal in some states? Before Roe versus Wade, they never told us that. And what women were doing to the tune of 30,000 women or more were driving to that state to get abortions. Am I promoting abortions, supporting abortions? No, I'm just trying to tell you that if you, if the answer is just legislation only, man is going to always find a way to get around legislation. Let's get and lay the ax to the root of the tree. Let's disciple people. Let's care about people. Let's be inconvenienced and get in the lives of people. And so just like right up behind me, these sisters in power in the world, which represent our ladies that are here, put them I in mean, there doing a job, making this. And look at what Tony's doing over there. Tony, you got a nice little artwork going on over there. Let's see your wall. Look at Tony's wall. Look at Pam. You know Pam is creative back over there. Look at what Pam's got going on over there. And uh, uh, we can't wait for you to see. Yesterday we got our we got our refrigerator. Yesterday uh, that was put in, and we just literally been going by faith, step by step, day by day. Things are never going to return to what we once knew as the old template of life as usual. It ran its time. It had its day, but now we are approaching the consummation of the church age, which is the greatest age of the harvest, which means if it's harvest time, you don't do things the same way you did before harvest time. When it's harvest time, you get up early. You got to get ready for the harvest. You got to be focused on the harvest. And that's what we're having to do right now. We got to do things that we've never done before, inconvenience ourselves and say, you know what? Turning a house into a, a teen pregnancy center is 10,000 square feet on the lake, 34 beds. That's a lot of lives that we could rescue. And then periodically we'll switch it to a safe house for the girls that have been rescued out of trafficking and be a blessing to their life like we did with the 19 that we did in collaboration with the ministry uh, for Christmas. And so we want you to connect with us and we want to connect with you. And this is what I want to say. Anyone, any pastors that's watching, any men that's watching, any uncles, any brothers, anybody that's saying, you know what? I like what you're doing because I believe that it's time to, we've done a lot of talking in the body of Christ. It's time to put more action and let, let the world see our love demonstrated. The Bible says, let our light so shine amongst men that they will see our good works and glorify our father, which is in heaven. So we're saying, let's talk more action. You know what James said? James said, I think it's 214 in that whole part. He was saying, you know, you say that you have faith and he talked about somebody being destitute without food and a person in need. And you say you have faith and you don't respond to them. He was like, you know, what kind of, what value is there to your faith? And then he goes on to say, faith without works is dead. And that word works means iran, charitable deeds, charitable efforts, not just I'm word of faith that I can use my faith to get stuff for me. But no, my faith has a corresponding action of caring for people. So we're simply saying, I believe that we can change the way people think that it doesn't have to be Planned Parenthood giving direction and giving the only narrative and giving the only par narrative or path to a girl that finds herself pregnant and maybe out of wedlock and not didn't plan the pregnancy. But there is another way. And God does have a plan for that child. 
and there is life on the other side of this. And so I don't have a right to say anything to you or judge you or criticize you if I'm not willing to push my sleeve up and say, you know what? We got a place for you to come to. And interesting enough, so many things have been birthed right here from this place. And I was saying yesterday that I told Mama Mary, I said, Mama Mary, the same way all those women were birthed during the times of Sisters of Power in the World, babies are going to be birthed. There are going to be some midwives that say, I'm going to come and stay with the girls until the baby's born. When, when it's come time for the last few days before delivery, I'm going to come there and be a part of the delivery. We may have some babies delivered right here at the house. But more importantly, there are women like Jennifer Cruz saying, I'm coming down with my daughter. And she's got this book on how to put, get the mother to put the baby on a particular schedule so the mother can have a balanced life and perhaps go back to school or whatever. And so she's going to come in with her daughter. So if you are a businesswoman, you're a part of a sorority, you're, you're AKA, you're Delta, whatever, you're, you're a church group or women's group and saying we would sure love to come down there and be a part of what dr bailey is doing so call us at and maybe somebody calling that not on my uh, uh, preaching out to me to say someone's calling call um let's see what numbers they can do 336-917-2630 pal make sure you all keep checking that line uh 336-917-2630 to see if anyone's leaving a message or you can call 336-782 one two two eight three three six seven eight two one two two eight. And if you want to donate and cash app us, just five dollars, ten dollars. Here's some baby powder. Here's some oil. Here's for a, a, a mattress or whatever. All tax donations are tax deductible. We've been doing this for forty one years in one hundred and forty seven countries. And school teachers and uh, early childhood developers. Every last one of you. We'd love to come and have you be on board. When I came in and Pam was playing the music with uh, the baby music, I was like, wow. The vision is manifested and it's happening right in front of our face. And guess what? We sure would love to have you come and be a part of this. We're doing it all by faith. And I closed, I was thinking about what if we had only known that all of that effort that we were given on debating about Roe versus Wade. That we be given that same amount of time and said, let's push up our sleeves and let's have places, churches and people and places all over where people can go as a place of refuge and know there's godly counsel and wisdom and someone's gonna pray with you. And someone's gonna care for you. And someone's gonna take you by the hand and be a Titus too, auntie, mama big sister to you and say, baby, there is a way. And that's why we're here. And so thank you for listening to us. And I can't wait for you. Make sure you hop on tomorrow. We'll be out there uh, with those living up under the bridges. We'll be out there just doing what God called us to do. He says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me water. When I was naked, you clothed me. And if you're anywhere in the Atlanta area, come and meet us. Uh, do, give me a direct message on Facebook so that you come and meet us. If you're in the Atlanta area, we just thank God for Minister Chris Scott and what she's doing under the leadership of her pastor, Pastor Timothy McBride. And we're going to be here for a while uh, in this area. So come and hang out with us and be a part of manifesting this vision. Thank you so much. This is Dr. Pat. Till next time, we'll see you. And we're going to focus on what God told us to focus on, focusing on life. See you tomorrow.